Isabella Blow was a British fashion icon and was the fashion director at Tatler. She is credited with discovering hat designer Philip Tracy, and fashion designer Alexander McQueen, when she purchased the entirety of his Dynamite premiere show influenced by Jack the Ripper. Blow and her husband, Detmar, separated in 2004. Both had affairs with other people during the separation. Blow was also diagnosed with bipolar disorder during this time and began electroshock treatments. After 18 months apart, Isabella and Detmar Blow were back together. The joy was short-lived when Isabella was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. At the Milan fashion shows in February of 2006, Blow informed her old boss, Anna Wintour, that she was planning to kill herself. She then started to tell her plans to all of her close friends. Speaking about suicide was offered up freely, and was found to be impossible to separate from her wit and sense of humor. After returning home to London, Wintour and two others arranged for Blow to enter a residential treatment program, but she left halfway through the six-week course. A few weeks later, as Detmar was attending a dinner for designer Vivian Westwood, Philip Tracy stopped by Blow's London apartment, finding her in a frail state, having overdosed on sleeping pills. After that first attempt at suicide, Detmar placed Isabella under the care of medical authorities. Blow began a course of electroshock treatment once again. She confessed to friends that she felt she was losing her mind. In April of 2006, things took a turn for the worse. Blow was traveling unaccompanied by taxi to a treatment facility in West London when heavy traffic hit on the motorway. She got out of the taxi, strolled up a pedestrian overpass, ascended the railing, and jumped 30 feet onto the road below. Both of her ankles were broken. For three weeks Blow would be on a high from shock therapy, then she would start to come down and have to go back to the hospital, where the cycle would start all over again. Friends thought Detmar could have been unable to deal with the situation because his father, Jonathan Blow, committed suicide when Detmar was 14 from drinking weed killer, a poison that causes internal organs to shut down. In the autumn of 2006, Blow took some flowers to her father's grave at Doddington and, reflecting her grandfather's suicide, checked into a nearby hotel. This time, she took the safeguard of phoning Philip Tracy to inform him that she would be overdosing with pills. Tracy called Blow's Tatler colleague Kate Bernard, who discovered that Blow had booked a car with the magazine's account, and traced her to the hotel, where her plan was foiled. Other suicide attempts took even more outlandish turns. One of Blow's idols, a fellow manic depressive, Virginia Woolf, drowned herself by filling her pockets with stones and wadding into the river near her home in Sussex. Blow went to the river, but it was dry after the lack of rain over the summer. On another attempt, she went back to the lake at Doddington, where her brother drowned 40 years earlier. She got into the water but found it impossible to drown herself because she was too buoyant. After that, she attempted to get horse tranquilizers from a veterinarian, claiming her horse had a broken leg. That plan failed when the doctor required examining the horse first. She had planned to jump off of a bridge that crossed over the Thames in London, but Blow learned that there were nets to catch jumpers and decided that it would be too unrefined to become entangled. Earlier in the year, during a weekend at Hills, Blow absconded with her husband's car late one night. Friends worried her disappearance pointed to another suicide attempt, and they were right. She plunged the car into the rear end of a Tesco supermarket truck. The car was demolished, but Blow was saved by her airbag and came out of the wreckage intact. She told Detmar quote, I always hated Tesco's. Blow traveled to Goa India to stay with Carla Otto. There was yet another overdose, on the beach, and yet another rescue. Friends knew it was simply a matter of time before she succeeded. Blow had surgery to remove an ovarian cyst. The anesthesia sent her into a deep depression. She went for another round of shock therapy, but it wasn't working the way it had previously. On Saturday, May 5, Blow's sister, Lavinia stepped out to run some errands. When she returned, she found Blow in the fetal position on the bathroom floor. She had thrown up, the blue in her vomit suggested something more venomous than sleeping pills. During the car ride to the hospital, she confided she had drank weed killer in the field by the house. 
According to Lavinia, Blow was worried that she hadn't drank enough of the poison to kill her, mostly because she had puked most of it back up. The doctors in Gloucester couldn't be sure how much of the poison she had consumed until tests came back. For most of that day and into the next, her close family and friends hang on to the yearning that Blow had taken less than a fatal dose. The next day, doctors at the hospital confirmed their worst fears, Isabella was dying. They couldn't be sure how long she would live, maybe as long as three weeks, but the damage was done and could not be reversed. Philip Tracy sat with her for hours on end, noting quote, she wasn't depressed. Even as she was dying, she was making everyone laugh. Blow made plans to visit with close friends and her husband the next day. Everyone went back to Hills for the night, intending to return the following morning, but she was dying more rapidly than they knew. She had taken much more than the lethal dose. Isabella Blow died in her sleep a few minutes after 5 in the morning on May 7. Many days after, Alexander McQueen asked a medium to contact his friend. The medium reportedly told McQueen that Isabella was quote, with her grandmother. She is happy, and wishes everyone would not be so sad. Sometime later the medium sent along a new message from Isabella stating quote, and by the way, my mother is not to have any of my hats or shoes. Detmer told the press that his wife Isabella had died of cancer, but the coroner later reported that Blow's death was a suicide. Detmer also sent a text to all of their friends the morning she died that read, quote, is he died peacefully last night. I am heartbroken. Detmer. Blow's funeral was held at Gloucester Cathedral on May 15, 2007. Her coffin, made of willow, was dominated by one of her Philip Tracy hats as well as a floral arrangement. Actor Rupert Everett and actress Joan Collins delivered eulogies. A memorial service was held in the Guards Chapel in London on September 18, 2007, where Anna Wintour and Geordie Gregg spoke.